Hello, I'm Pastor Simon. I'm the Minister of Wallingford Baptist Church, and it's good to welcome you as we continue our series on Romans. And I just want to introduce Romans chapter 7 by simply saying what it's saying is we are married to Christ. What does it mean that we are married to Christ? And what's that got to do with our church covenant that we're about to renew together on March the 20th? Romans chapter 7 begins by Paul using the analogy that we are married to Christ. We are died to the law and our sinful nature, and we are now married to Christ. And so he says in verse four, so my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. For when we were controlled by our sinful nature, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our bodies, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Paul is using this analogy that we are now married to Christ. And firstly, he's reminding us that marriage is a legal standing. It's a legal uh, constitution. And therefore, that's the same for us as Christians. When we put our faith in Christ, we are now married to Christ. We've died to the old way of relating to God and old sinful nature, and we are now married to Christ. And our standing before God is that we are righteous in Christ because we are married to him. Our legal standing is that we are right with God because of Christ. And just as when I was married, there was a marriage ceremony, there was an event that I look back to where I began uh, my marriage to my wife. So as Christians, we look back to an event where we died with Christ and we died to the old way of relating to God. And we were resurrected into a new legal standing before God as righteous. And that event for us is the death of Jesus on the cross. And Paul is saying, we look back to that, that through the body of Christ, uh, that we now belong to him who died for us. And so as that event took place, I look to that event as when my legal standing uh, with God changed, when I, as it were, were married to Christ, and I am now right with God. So I now have a legal standing of righteousness with God, which will last forever, as in uh, human marriage, it's until death do us part. But because Jesus died and rose again into immortality, our relationship with Christ is forever, has an eternal standing, and therefore we are right with God forever on that legal basis. But more than that, marriage is not just an event is not just a legal basis, it's not just a certificate, it is a relationship. And here we told that we belong to Christ, we now belong to him, we have a relationship with him. He is, as it were, like our husband, and we relate to him. We become one flesh, marriage is about being one flesh, and that's the imagery of being a Christian, that we are in Christ, that we abide with Christ, we remain in Christ, and so therefore, not only do I have a legal standing, I have a relationship with Christ, that I am in Christ, and Christ is in me, and therefore I live my life from that basis of that relationship. And I seek to build on that relationship. I seek to remain in him. I seek to allow his life to throw, flow through me. And I do that by spending time with him. I do that by reading the Bible, by talking through him through prayer, by obeying the commands of that relationship through his word. I belong to him and therefore I live for him. And as a result, the fruit of that, and not taking this analogy too far, but I think Paul is saying that, that in a marriage, and he talks about sexual relations, and, and that's the one flesh, but then that bears fruit, it bears children. And what is the fruit of my relationship with Jesus? Not just a legal standing, but me belonging to him, and remaining in him, and following him, and allowing his life to flow through me. Therefore, I produce life. I produced a changed lifestyle. I produce 
a, a, a life that is lived for the glory of him, not a life of sin and death and weakness and failing and slavery, but a life of freedom, of joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. As Paul goes on to say, with the life of Jesus, we serve in the new way of the spirit, of the love and the joy and the peace. And, and we leave those footprints of peace. We leave that transformed life, that fruit we leave around us in our homes, in our families, in our church and in our community. We are married to Christ. That is who we are. Now, that's a legal status. And when we put our faith in Jesus, that happened. But we also need to know that we belong. And therefore, we need to build on that relationship. We need to remain in Christ. We need to remain in his word. We need to listen to him through scripture. We need to spend time as we come together as the people of God to worship him and to be with him at church on a Sunday morning. And we also need to allow the fruit of our relationship, the spirit of God, to bring a changed lifestyle and impact those around us. That is who we are. That's our legal status. But we now need to live in that belonging to Christ, that love relationship with Christ. And we need to know him. Now, that for some of us, that's difficult. How is my relationship with Jesus like a marriage? But that's the personal nature. That's our personal salvation, that we know Jesus in that way by the Holy Spirit that he comes in us and as Paul's already said he poured his love into our hearts we buy the Holy Spirit and we need to allow that to fill us we need to build on that relationship and bear the fruit of it but what does this mean for us as a church when I studied uh, this uh, book I was in America at the time at Bible College in America and uh, we, we studied the Greek text and my lecturer said when it says we or, or you, you need to think of the American phrase, you all, you all, not just the you, the personal you, but it's a collective you. And for us, as we look at this passage, we need to remember that actually we are married to Christ as a church, as a people, not just as individuals, but that we relate to him as the people of God, that we are the, the bride of Christ is often how the church is referred. And it's something we are together. And so therefore we need to recognize this isn't an individual faith. This is something that we do together. We relate to Jesus as our husband, as the bride, the church. And therefore we need to see this phrase, not just as an individual faith, but a covenantal faith, a faith of a people built together, to, to allow, to belong to Jesus together and allow his fruit to flow through us together. That's what the church is. It is the bride of Christ. And therefore, as a church, to, to remind ourselves, we form a covenant. Marriage, human marriage, is a covenant. It's a set of promises we make before God. And so we, as a Baptist church, believe in church membership, where those who love Jesus, who recognize their legal standing with Christ, then covenant together to be the bride of Christ, covenant together to be lives that live for G Jesus, belong to him, who come together every Sunday morning. And part of our covenant is we, we commit to come to Sunday worship, to be with Jesus together. We also commit to pray together and study God's word together in a life group. And we promise to love one another, to be holy, to be pure, to be the pure bride of Christ, to allow uh, the fruit of Christ to flow through us and to challenge one another when it doesn't. And this is what it means for us to covenant together. And so therefore, as we hear that phrase, you all, let us recognize that we're called to this Christian life, the bride of Christ, this marriage together as a church. And therefore, let us covenant with Jesus, but also with one another to love Jesus, to love one another, to be that pure bride that bears the fruit of Jesus. And so we want to encourage all those who have been connected to our church, either coming in person or on Zoom or Facebook and YouTube. We really want you to come and decide that Jesus has called you to covenant with us, to love Jesus and to be the bride of Christ together, to bear the fruit of Jesus, the life of Jesus in our life together. And if you can do that, we really encourage you to join us on March the 20th, on Sunday, March the 20th. If you can at all possible, come in person where we will make promises. We will renew our promises before God to be the bride of Christ together, to get love Jesus together as we come to worship 
on a Sunday to study the word and to be that pure bride loving Jesus together as a community, as the church. We want you to join us. We believe that Jesus is calling you to join us, to be part of that you all, to be the bride of Christ. So come, hear the call of Jesus. Know that he loves his church. He loves the church of Wallingford Baptist Church. And he sees you as part of that. So come and renew your commitment to him and us as we renew the covenant together. If you want to know more about the covenant, talk to me, contact me. I can send you a copy of it. We can discuss it. But ultimately, at the heart of it is recognizing that together we are married to Christ. And therefore, we are to love Christ together. And in being one unity, unified together, loving one another we therefore become that pure bride of Christ that is pleasing to him. Join us, covenant with us, and let's see the fruit in our own lives, the fruit in our church, and the fruit in our community of the resurrection and life of Jesus flowing through us. God bless you, and do come on March the 20th. Let's commit together. And if you're not a church member and you want to commit for the first time for us as a church, it'd be a great day to do it. Do talk to me. God bless you, and bye for now.